Yeah, we're not ready. You have to be back here. Gotta hold up. Gotta have my team organized. Okay. Otherwise, I can't find it next time. I found a blue one. Another one? Yeah. Go up. 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 Go Okay, everybody. My name is Gretchen. I'm a beer tour guide and engineer on the Badgeline Trails for Ride. We have lots of fun stuff going on out here. The <coughs> old like systems comes out of our spray and sets up our beautiful play area for us. We've got some brand new critters out of the zoo, babies in the petting zoo, and more on the way. We've got Jericho the giraffe, who's almost a year old now, and we have a baby girl giraffe coming for later on this summer. We're going to go for a ride out here. We'll stop by each of the pens. I'll tell you a little bit about the animal that's in there. We get all the the ride. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, you can let me know. And all we ask is that you please stay seated while the train is moving and in the car at all times, okay? Are you guys ready? Mouse from up to a hundred yards away, 
and Watson on to travel over five miles in one night. On this gorgeous Penasta left here, we have Robbie and Louise, our two full grown Timberwolves. Hi, girls, what are you doing? Come here! <laughs> hey, Robbie, come on. Oh, good girl, good job. Now, these girls here are just nine years old. Come on, let's go. We actually bottle fed them as babies in our petting zoo. So they're very nice and friendly. Come here. Yay, good job. And though their fur looks sort of rough right now, they're just shedding out the last of their winter hair and growing in their summer hair. Come on, let's go. Thank you. By 1923, there were no wolves living in the state of Wisconsin. And they slowly started to reintroduce them. And now, there are over 400 wolves living in the state of Wisconsin today. And living on the pond of the right here, we have Wally and Wendy the Whoopers one. Wendy is sitting on a nest of seven eggs over behind the blue tarp. Wally is patrolling the fence line to make sure that nobody gets too close to the nest or his wife. And the Whooper swans have yellow on their beaks that's like a fingerprint. There are no two of them alike. On the side here, we have Annie. Hot Annie girl has a voice. Now, Annie here is our seven-year-old female bobcat. Ready? We actually bottle fed her as a baby in our petting zoo. So she's very nice and friendly and very playful. You missed it. And though she still does have her claws, she doesn't usually use them unless she's climbing up one of her trees. There you go. Out in the wild, a bobcat's favorite food is rabbits. Although they will eat anything from the size of a mouse. All the way up to a white tail deer. Now these guys right here are pretty special. Come on, let's go guys. These are called fishers. And they're related to the mink and the weasel. And their job in Wisconsin is to take care of the porcupine population. They are one of the only animals that can kill porcupine without getting any quills in them. Now the bigger one of the two is Fred, the smaller one is his wife, and her name is Fran. They're baby boys in the petting zoo right now, and you don't see a whole lot of fishers out in the wild, or even in captivity, so we're pretty lucky to have them out here. Find the big pen, off to the right here, we have Jake and Susie. Come on guys! And they are albino raccoons. Are you coming? Raccoons. Come on, let's go. Now, these two are just like your everyday raccoons, except they end up a little different color. And you do see this color out in the wild, although not very often. In fact, these two are so special because there's actually only one in about every 750. Thousand raccoons born that end up being albino American porcupines. And here we have Pokey and Petunia. Alright, girls, we're not on Sala, it's time to move. Come on, let's go. You don't want to get those out. <laughs> That's alright. Come on, let's go. Let's go. You go down the tree. Take the direction. Let's go. All the way down the tree, please. Are you guys gonna, are you gonna get them out? No, they're just going to move around so you can see them better. See the squirrels? Down. Yeah. All the way. What, you're going the wrong direction, you goofball. ball. Let's go. I thought those, go. Were, all the those way were pandas. All the way. Hey, this way. We saw lots of monkeys. Hurry up, let's go. Hurry up, let's go. Thank you very much, girls. You cheated. Now, one thing that most people misunderstand about porcupines is that they think they can shoot yeah. their quills. They think the ones no. you come yeah. close yeah. enough, the quills will just come shooting right out of their body and hit you. The, but it doesn't the, quite work the right. Way. Comes what happens is they're always losing or recording quills. When they lose them, they get stuck in between the rest of them. 
So when you come close enough, they'll throw the tails from side to side, and all those loose coils will come flying out. Otherwise, you have to touch them to get them stuck in you. Now, can anybody tell me or guess how many quills a porcupine has on its body? How many? What's your guess? Um, um, 100, um, 110. There's more than 110. What's your guess, sweetheart? Um, a thousand. More than 1,000. Okay, fine. They actually have 32,000 quills covering their body. Those are good guesses. There's only two spots that porcupine that do not have quills. The first spot is on their face, and the second spot is their underside of their belly. Otherwise, everything including their tail is covered in quills. So hide in and here. We have Chuck, Charles, and Carla, the woodchucks. And now I'll give them the move so everybody gets a chance to see them. All right, guys, we're not the rocks. It's time to move. Come on, let's go. All the way down the tree, please. All the way down. All the way down. Keep going. Keep going. You know the rules. All the way down. Thank you very much. Excuse me, you two. I see you in the corner. You are not rocks. Let's go, let's go. Thank you very much. Now, woodchucks, who are also known as groundhogs, would normally live in burrows under the ground. We have things a little different out here. We put wire underneath all of our cages, put them on the top. That way they can dig, but they can't dig out. And we give them houses to live in. We let them inside every night. All three woodchucks will go around, pick up all the dead leaves and birds that they can find, and make their own nice soft little bed inside their house. But then we have to lock them out during the day, because otherwise they would hide there, and nobody would get to see them. think we're in trouble. You guys know what that is in there? But skunks stink, don't they? Yeah. yeah. But I don't smell anything to you guys. No. Hmm. Well, I have an idea. Let's see what happens if I scare this skunk. Let's see what happens if I scare him. Although normally, out in the wild, 
Badges are not. That's nice. What? Oh, you want to be upside down? They're actually considered the second meanest animal for their size. So you don't want to go up to one out in the wild and say, oh, nice badger, let me pet you. They're not that friendly. Are you ready? we got to go right that up now. Yes. What's oh, down? No. Here, see how big his toenails are? Thank you again for riding the train. I hope you guys come back soon. We got lots more stuff.